It has impacted my life um, in that I am infected. So I'm 54 years old. I've been living with HIV for 24 years. And there was a period of time when I thought I was dying when I first got diagnosed, 1990. Actually, the doctor told me, you have a year to live. So to be told that you have a year to live, it's like, what do you want to do before you die? So I went home to my family. And because I wanted to die with my family. But I noticed when I was there that I wasn't dying. Matter of fact, I was there for four years and I wasn't dying. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go back and live my life. So I went back to San Francisco and um, I started living my life. I was still not, not sure about the HIV medications. At the time, what the media was saying about HIV was that people generally had 10 years before they progressed to AIDS. Um, of course, everything depended on your, your T cell count. There was a lot of talk about T cells. So I kept a good eye on my T cells and I was terrified of the meds and I wasn't sure that I was ever going to be able to be in a relationship again, a love relationship. So, you know, it's like to look at your life as maybe being alone until you die. It was pretty sad. But I learned soon there, there I, after I um, got involved with a uh, recovery program, got a community of HIV positive women I got involved with, and started going on retreats. I started telling my story at conferences. I even started dating. Um, and it was pretty amazing, the life that I found that I could have living with this virus. So I started meds in 1997 because I got sick. My T cells were dropping. Um, 1996, I did the AIDS ride on very, very few T cells. I started doing Chinese acupuncture and herbs and, you know, I thought that was going to save my life and keep me healthy and keep the HIV from progressing, um, but that wasn't the case. So after being off the meds for seven years, I finally um, contracted a opportunistic infection, toxoplasmosis, and I tell you, to get sick with the virus is a whole nother thing because it makes you think about okay if I really want to die I could just lay here and die or I could take some meds fortunately there was medication available for toxoplasmosis um, my doctor was really 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 amazing Dr. Meg Newman over at Ward 86 you know when I first met her and I believe October of 96 my best friend at the time Rebecca Dennison told me she says I know you don't want to take the meds and you know but I feel like you should at least have a doctor someone that you could go to if you get sick so I said to her well I'm not gonna get sick but to make you happy I'll, I'll go see a doctor so I went and I got a doctor over at Ward 86 Dr. Meg Newman and she was amazing she never pushed the medication on me she had been working in the field, I think probably since the beginning of AIDS. She was incredible. You could talk to her about anything and she would listen and she had no judgment. And she would say to me every visit, well, since you're not going to take the meds, I need to see you more often. And, you know, from the way that I've seen the progression of this disease is it does eventually. You will eventually get sick. So just to let you know that's going to happen. So we did um, prophylaxis for uh, paternistic infections, uh, primarily for uh, PCP, but I didn't do a prophylaxis for Toxo. I didn't even know if they had one. So when I got Toxo, it scared me. Um, and I realized that, okay, I do want to live. I couldn't really tolerate, tolerate the Toxo meds right at first. Um, they made me nauseous and uh, but they did treat the, the the illness the virus I believe it's a virus toxoplasmosis I don't know it's a bacterial whatever but it affects your brain headaches disorientation you know I was in the hospital for eight days and I felt like my life had ended 
I'm like, oh my God, this is horrible. I'm a lesbian, and I just want to talk about that for a minute because in the beginning of the epidemic, us lesbians were like, wow, finally something that's not going to affect us, you know, being women and being lesbian. We felt like we were kind of like, you know, third world. We're kind of like way down here on the on the scale of, of humanity, you know. Um, no one really noticed us or we just kind of had our, we, we stuck together. But we were like, you know, breathing, <sighs> finally a disease we're not going to have to worry about. But unfortunately, some of us were behaving in risky, had risky behavior. So, you know, some of us did get infected. And uh, it shocked me when I got infected. I was like in disbelief. Like, are you kidding me? So, then I told the doctor, you need to test me again. Just test me again. He tested me again, very nice doctor. Um, and he said, uh, I'm gonna put you on AZT. AZT I did for one day. And it made me so sick. I said, I'm not going to take this medication. I'm just going to lay down. So I tell you that because with Toxo, it was kind of the same. When I got sick on Toxo meds, I went to the doctor one day. And I was like, my doctor was on vacation, Dr. Newman. She told me what doctor was going to be taking over while she was there, while she was gone. I saw Dr. Lee, I believe it was. And I went into the office, and I was very serious. And I said, I can't tolerate these Toxo medications. So just tell me how long I have before I'm going to die. And the guy just kind of... It was really amazing, because he just kind of didn't even respond to that. He's got this book, and he's looking at different medications for Toxo, and he says, okay, we're going to try this one here, sulfodiazine, and, uh, okay, well, have you tried that, and um, come see me next week. And I'm like, did you not hear me? I said I was ready to die, so <laughs> I really wasn't. I just didn't want to be sick. It's really horrible when you're sick, when you're vomiting, when you're diarrhea, when you're can't eat. I love to eat. I and mean, when you can't eat, what is the point of living? So I started a new medication and that one didn't make me sick. I did not get sick. I'm so excited. My life began. I started dating. I got into several relationships. Um, I'm in a relationship now. Um, my partner's negative and I'm very open with my status. And when I'm dating, I right away would tell people I was positive. Because I spoke at conferences and I traveled around a lot and I was very uh, visible in the community as an activist, um, so people were very aware of my status because I was I was completely out with it. So that felt very freeing, you know, to be able to just be in your body and be in the world and be positive and have it be okay, you know, have it. People are not looking down on you. That feels really good. So. I had a lot of support. I had a, a huge community of positive uh, women um, organization. I had my best friend had twins. She was positive, and she had twin baby girls, and they're negative, and her husband is negative, and it's just beautiful things have happened with women who are positive that I've seen just do some amazing things. Go back to school, become a nurse, you know, get married, have children, um, get jobs. You know, go back to work, get off disability. It's really amazing. So, that's kind of how I live my life. I live my life in a way that I love life. And I want to feel every emotion. Um, I want to encourage people to continue to live. I want to help my community to be strong and to stay together. And, and really strengthen one another. Um, and... As we see with HIV now, you can live on it, you know, you can live with it. There's so many different medications now that it's kind of a chronic illness. You know, it's just something that's there to haunt you every day. You take your meds, but you're living. We have a lot of choices today, which is great. Excuse me, but in the end, I want to say, although we can live on this illness, don't go out and get infected on purpose. Don't do it. It's not something to do that's fun. It's just, we learn to live with it because we have it. We've, we've made choices and some choices were bad and the result of getting infected. So, if anybody who thinks it's cool, it's not. You know, if you, wanna, if you want to be around HIV, then go volunteer in an HIV organization. Be around people who are positive.